Hey, K40 users. Uh, so here's another quick video. Uh, I've been dealing with a lot of questions about alignment when your gantry has warp in it, and I came to realize that nobody's really put forward a, an answer as to how do we know how much warp there is, how to detect it, how to see if when we're making adjustments uh, we're going in the right, right direction. So I've come up with a little method here, and I'm just going to show it to you really quick, where I've taken some sewing thread and I've held it down on top of the gantry bars diagonally right you can see where I put that one there and then put this one here and so I've got my my two threads crisscrossing in the center there and I made sure when I laid these down that um, basically that one wasn't pulling down on the other Right, so if the if the twist is in a certain direction, you don't want you don't want the two to be pushing down on each other. So you may have to go over the uh, first thread or under it. Now you can see here that my two threads aren't touching. I'm going to bring one up there, and you can see it's not touching. So if the if the gantry had no twist in it whatsoever, they should be very lightly touching each other. Uh, less than half a thread's worth, right? But as you can see, we are not touching. Which means that my gantry has ever so slightly an amount of twist in it. And based on this one being low, this this thread being the low thread and this one being the high thread and them not touching, what it tells me is that the back, let me see if I can zoom out here, guess not, yeah. So what it tells me is that the back, back left and front right are higher together than the uh, front left and back right, but it's so slight in my case that it's probably not even worth addressing but if you're curious as to how that is addressed uh, you see these mounting bolts here right <clears throat> have one there there's one under there there's one under there you can either tighten or loosen and then shims put some shim stock underneath now because my these two diagonals here are high I can't really tighten down assuming that my frame is already tightened down as far as it can go so the only option I have is to raise the other two which means uh, probably just loosening one of them right uh, because uh, so when when these are uh, when these are high and these are low what it means is that the triangle that's formed here on this diagonal is ramping upwards like that and then the triangle on that side is ramping down, right? So we have a crest along this line of two planes and really what we want is a single plane. We want those two planes to be coplanar. Uh, and so the only option we would have for that is to shim up these two corners and keeping these two corners tight. Now. Since it's such a small movement, having these uh, cords like this is very helpful because you can see as you make the change, you can see how it affects the distance between the cords. Yeah, and it's so slight on my own. You know, that, that's going to translate into a very, very minor move in the dot when you, when you have the camera, I mean, when you have, a, when you have the laser aligned you know, uh, front to back and uh, left to right, and then you move it into that opposite corner to check it, uh, the dot is gonna move a very, very slight amount, uh, and it's really not gonna make a big difference. Only to, you know, the people that are just completely obsessed with it would it make a big difference. So I'm just gonna leave that there for now. Later I may, I may see if I can abuse my gantry and make another video where I show you how to correct it. Uh, but that's it for this video.